when I wasn't, when I left home, I was a nanny, and I struggled to do this really easy nanny job, because I was overeating, and I would get sleepy, and a couple of times, I actually fell asleep on the job, and I was threatened to, come, threatened to be fired each time, so, I was scared. How am I going to survive? And, and, and that's when I started, I saw a therapist, and he said, what do you want? And I said, well, uh, if you're asking me what I really want, you know, I would like to find someone who could take care of me, because I, I can't survive this way. I can't take care of myself. So I've had a few jobs, but for the most part, I've been like a kept woman all, all my adult life. Where I'm just sort of in my room and it's all messy because I'm still waiting for my mother to come and take me by the hand and parent me and say, here I am to mother you and love you and show you how to go through life. I mean, I have cleaned my room, but it's, it's, it's where I'm wounded. It's where I feel so... Wow, that, that's, yeah. that's deep. So... Whatever happened to you in your past, it's still there. Like, it's still deeply affecting you in the present. The things every that... Every day, every day of my life, I'm always like, when am I ever going to clean my room? That's my thing. Like, I just sit in my bed pretty much all day, unless I'm mm -hmm. in a conversation with somebody out in the world or downstairs. I'm... Like, kind of, just, just, should I describe to you what I'm looking at in my room right now? This is mess. Like, it just, it looks so horrible. It looks like a bachelor, like a guy who just throws his clothes on the floor and, like, toilet paper rolls are just laying on the floor. I mean, it just does not look like who I am at all. I know I'm, like, this lovely, elegant, feminine woman. I live like some bachelor guy who just does nothing to, to care for himself. Oh, that's deep. And I'm, 40, and I'm 45 years old. I'm just... Right. I don't have much furniture. I'm just kind of living like this. The same way I, I lived when I first left home. It's just like this adolescent. I'm just not ready to responsibility for them. Uh, let me ask you this. On a scale from 1 to 10, how greatly do you think that these things that happened um, within your childhood like, are, affect you from doing the things that you want to do now? Because it seems like when you go to do the things you want to do now, it's almost painful because those past things, something in the past is coming up within you when you go to do them. It doesn't look like it's the tasks themselves. I don't think it has anything to do with your room or you going outside walking. It seems like there's something emotional there that creeps up and it's somehow painful. Is that it? Yeah, and I've, yeah, I've, been, aware, and I've been aware of it. Right. I've always been aware of it. It's just the pain, the pain that, that my mother was never there to, to take me by the hand. She never did that. I, I just waiting my whole life for her to take me by the hand and say, here, honey, here's how you clean your room. You know, mommy's going to show you this. You know, that's what I'm waiting. Right, right. Or for her to sit, just sit and spend time with me and hug me and talk to me and, and invite me to ask questions about life and just all the things you would expect a mother to do, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, all you wanted was what what was what was already suppo supposed to be there? What was basic? But of course, I knew she never had that in her mother either, and and I'm sure you know all the ancestry before everyone was just surviving. Now, are you angry? Are you angry about it, or just sad about it? It's a lo the longing. When is she gonna show up? When is she ever, like, it's still a fantasy that she's going to, like, break out of this thing that she 
does and just go, oh, you know, I'm so sorry, honey, I haven't seen you my whole life, I never paid attention to you, and, you know, like a tearful thing and be like, you know. I know, I know a reality is never going to happen, but I still feel like it's always going to happen. Right, right. Now, okay, so when you go to places, like when you go out, when you were walking to the to the moon, to the I mean to the beach, to experience the moon and all that stuff, is that something that came up? Did you think about that stuff at all, or it was just the emotion that came up, or did any of it come up? Can, can I share something just from my own, on my own? Yeah. The guy with the dog? Yeah. Oh, really? The dog, yeah. Oh. I, had, I, I had stayed away from him for two weeks, and I broke down and called him today. And he told me, oh, he was bad, he was about to die, and he would call me in an hour. And he didn't, and I was devastated, and I was thinking about overeating, and I'm like, no. And I was able to get online and I saw this lifecode.com that said click on this to read about 10 ways you can make this a great new year and it, it said one of the 10 things it said is to cut people out of your life that are good for you, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes. And I struggle, sometimes. And I str I, I struggle to, to make that decision to click on that but when I did, I knew it was like a higher power opportunity. And the same when I talk to you, it's like a higher power. It's a lift. It's lifting, it's lifting me out of that toxic, longing, painful, unhappy, suffering little girl hoping mommy's going to show up. 
That's deep. That's deep. Somet sometimes you got to, you know what the strange thing is is sometimes when you um like cut people out like it, yeah it sometimes is the best thing for them too. Man, that, that was kind of tripped out what you said about that dog, how he was using the dog to be the surrogate wife. Uh-huh. He was using the dog to be the surrogate wife. Yeah. <laughs> he was using the dog to be the wife. That, like, but, but can you explain that a little bit, though? What's, why, would he, why would he have the need to do that, though? Like, what, from your perception, what, what's he tripping over? Yeah. Yeah, you we we were talking about the moon and you taking walks and um we were speaking about you grounding your energy through the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And did you ever go on that walk to go see the moon? I went on the walk. <laughs> I did, I did not I did not make it to look at the moon, but I almost did. Okay, so you you made it halfway. Your friend, his, his name is Mike? Yeah, he's 83. Okay. Wow, and, older guy. Yeah. And uh, I actually talked to him I said, you know, I should go see the Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm a double cancer as well, so that's why. Yeah, birthdays are like two days apart or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I know that the color for for Ju the the power color for July is like that cream color of the moon. Mm-hmm. Right. That ivory, that ivory color. So I look so amazing in that color, and I also feel so incredible in that color when I wear like this all cream or ivory outfit 